Hello everybody and welcome back to finally another one of Rosalind's three ball this short form video for the Charles Schwab challenge and for each and every week goes over some of the important information for the week also gives you some round one showdown and some round one bets because listen PGA DFS and golf sweating in my opinion if you're asking me is just the best so what I tried to do here is tried to give us a good fresh start uh, and make the fun start right away on Thursday morning. And some of it will end on Thursday, of course. Uh, but that's why I made this video. It's a, about a three to four minute video, getting in some good bets and some good showdown plays. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Is this week's tournament, the Charles Schwab Challenge. There we go. It's played at Colonial Country Club. It's a par 70, 7,200 yards. I think there might've been a, uh, a little 7,200, 72, a little mix up there, but it's a par 70, 7,200 yards. It's a short old track. 16 of the top 20 in the world are here to complete, missing Tiger Woods and Patrick Cantlay, two of my favorites. DraftKings though, giving us a million dollars to first place to play for this week. Still plenty of room in that contest. While FanDuel, $7 contest, $1 million guaranteed, 100 k to first place. They've also got a $500 tournament for 100 k to first place. So two really, really good sites. Uh, I'm sorry, two really good offerings on different sites this week uh, for D PGA DFS. So love to see all of that. All right, let's jump right in to one of the biggest, most important player comparisons this week, and it is Xander Schauffele versus Bryson DeChambeau. DeChambeau checks in at 10-1 on DraftKings, 11-5 on FanDuel. Well, prior to coming into this, and again, this is not really recent form, but we're going to leave it there anyway, just to show. Uh, Arnold Palmer, they each played there. Bryson DeChambeau took his strokes gained off the tee, prowess, and made uh, got him finishing fourth. Whereas Schauffele 24th in the week before that, the WGC Mexico, Bryson DeChambeau on a tear came in second, whereas Xander Schauffele 14th. So as you can see uh, from the strokes gained, Bryson's really been getting it done with the putter and off the tee, ranked 54th on approaches, so hasn't been doing great there, while Xander has needed his putter to heat up a little bit, 26th in, uh, on the approaches. So the reason why I brought these guys up this week, these guys should be a pivotal matchup. I suspect most people will start their lineups with either Rory or another guy. Oh, sorry, getting a little too far ahead of myself. I pushed the wrong button. Uh, so very important matchups here this week up on the top end on the second guy, maybe first guy in your lineup. Next three that I'm going to compare this week are Patrick Reed, Gary Woodland, and Jason Day. Patrick Reed is the highest priced out of them coming in at 9200 11-1 on FanDuel. Gary Woodland, 8-8 eight, eight, and 10-3, while Jason Day, 8-3 eight, and 9-9. Nine, nine. In their last start, Patrick Reed, man, he had been putting lights out. He's ranked third on the tour this year. Made him, uh, got him finishing quite high in almost every event he played in. 15th at the Arnold Palmer last time we saw him. Gary Woodland, last time we saw him, was at the Honda Classic. He finished eighth there. While Jason Day, man, he's had a really tough year. Supposed to be one of the best putters on tour. As you can see, he's ranked 177th this year. Not great on his approaches ever, ranked 138th. The last time we saw him, he withdrew due to a back injury. So he's had three months to heal that. We'll see if it's healed, but certainly Jason Day at those prices, if he is healthy, this is a course where he can use that around the green game to his advantage. So those are just five of the most important people playing here this week. I'd like to cover some of the guys that I think will be important matchups in the first little bit before we get into the sweats because golf sweats are just the best. So why not start the fun right away? That's kind of my tagline here. So, okay, here we got head-to-head. -head. We've got Kevin Tway plus 110 versus Russell Knox. So if you heard my Fit and Form podcast already, first of all, thank you for doing that. Uh, appreciate that. You would find that Russell Knox could be a good course fit here, but coming back, Kevin Tway, he hasn't missed a cut here. He's not very accurate off the tee, but has a very good short game when it's on. So I've got Kevin Tway versus Russell Knox in the first matchup, plus 110. I was looking for a plus matchup. I found one in Kevin Tway that I liked. I don't really have too much stats to back it up other than the fact that I know Kevin Tway's worst part of Kevin Tway's game is the fact that he's so errant and wild off the tee. 
Hopefully that won't affect him here that much because most other people's will be missing the fairway as well. Um, then the next one, Bryson DeChambeau's minus 106 against Justin Rose, but this one is on a DraftKings specific one, uh, and that is that there's no tie. So DraftKings is offering matchups, and they're also at offering matchups with no tie. Now, obviously, if you bet a matchup and your guy ties, it's a push, you get your money back. But in this sense, you get better odds on the guy you want to win. However, if they tie, you lose your money. So Bryson DeChambeau, minus 106 against Justin Rose. Justin Rose has had an awful year. In fact, Rose hasn't gained at least two strokes from tee to green in over 20 measured starts. That is just unheard of for a guy that was top 10 in the world. Now, he's almost doing the, who the next guy I'm going to talk about, Jordan Spieth descent down the official World Golf rankings as his strong play from two and three years ago is finally coming off the books as he's plummeted down the OWGR. And I wouldn't be surprised if that continues to happen. Although, a little piece of good news on Justin Rose, he finally got rid of that club maker Hanma. He's now back with, I believe it looks like TaylorMade, so maybe that will uh, start to move things around. We saw with Bubba Watson what happened when he decided to go to Volvic Ball over Titleist. He disappeared for a year and a half. Now all of a sudden he's made a resurgence, so maybe we see that similar situation with Justin Rose finally out of his equipment deal. Okay, so continuing on, we're going to go to the three balls before I talk about the round one showdown focus, which obviously you can see the two guys there, but three ball first. Nate Lashley. We saw Nate Lashley compete in the Scottsdale Open and play pretty well there. He's plus 210 against C.T. Pan and Scott Piercy. When I look at my model, I have Nate Lashley ranked above both of those guys. So it was a pretty easy bet for me to look at and say, well, hey, if the model is saying, you know, if the model is liking him better than the other two and he's getting the best odds, pretty easy bet there for me. Doesn't mean it's always going to pan out, of course, but that is uh, my reasoning behind it. JT Poston versus Daniel Berger and Ian Poulter is the next one. This one I may not be as excited about, I guess, but Daniel Berger struggles around the green, and Ian Poulter eh, may be heading towards a little bit of a regression after a good three years. JT Poston's got one of the best short games around. I don't think that's going to keep him too far out. We know that Poston struggles off the tee. It's not going to matter that much here. So I've got Poston being being able to hang with these guys quite a bit. He is also plus 210 versus Berger and Poulter. So uh, two bets this week, as I do each and every week. My yearly record was 3-3 three and three before, we, uh, before we stopped doing this. And on the uh, other side, uh, it was 6-6-1 six, six, with two parlays. Uh, speaking of the parlay, the Kevin Tway and Bryson DeChambeau parlay pays just over plus 300, so uh, not bad there. All right, let's move on to round one showdown focus. This week, DraftKings offering $10,000 to first place, $30,000 guaranteed for their showdown focus. And I've decided to pick on Jordan Spieth and Eric Van Ruyen. Eric Van Ruyen is one of the one of the... European tour ask, but he's now, I think, going to be playing a lot more on the PGA Tour as long as he gets a couple of more good starts in this year, which I'm sure he will. Uh, coming over here from South Africa, man, and he can light it up. He checks in for the first round at 7,100. I just wanted to make sure. I don't believe Jordan Spieth price is 8,800. I think that's supposed to be 8,000, and I must have just hit the wrong button there. I apologize. So I'm just making sure before we move on if uh, that is the case. So just bear with me two seconds. Yeah, he is 8,100 this week and uh, for round one. The reason why I'm picking Spieth in round one here, listen, it's been three-month layoff. We know that he loves to make a ton of birdies. We know that he's going to have a big number. I like to spend some money on him in showdown if I'm not going to spend my money on him on the long term. However, more than likely I will. I will say, though, for the round one, Rory McIlroy has been superb in first rounds this year. He's only 10900 versus his normal price of 11800 So I'll definitely be turning to Rory McIlroy in my showdown lineups. Uh, I think using that salary to my advantage uh, will be uh, beneficial in that regard. So hopefully uh, that gave you guys a, a good enough uh, opportunity to go out and make some uh, golf bets and sweats uh, for round one. Also, uh, give you a little inclination of who's playing this week. And, of course, for more information on that, 
join Ben and I tonight. Today is Wednesday uh, on the Live Before Lock Show, 8.30 p.m. We're going to be going over everything. I'm going to be doing uh, some uh, Fantasy Cruncher tutorials uh, and all that. So if, uh, if you're not going to be available for that, uh, I'm going to have coming out my model breakdown uh, where I go over each and every uh, piece of my model. And then from there, I will do, since it's our first week back, a short, quick Fantasy Cruncher tutorial on how I use the software to build my lineups. Uh, and uh, that should be great going forward. So until then, everybody, thanks for joining the Roslyn's 3-Ball. Hope you enjoyed it, and good luck on those bets for round one, and we will see you on the other side. Cheers, everybody.